Hello and welcome. My name is Heaven and today we are getting ready to prep for Thanksgiving. Over the years I have been preparing Thanksgiving dinner all by myself, a full spread, and over the years I have found some things that makes preparing Thanksgiving dinner a little bit easier so that on Thanksgiving day you can actually spend time enjoying family without being tired and exhausted and in the kitchen on your feet all day long. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make preparing Thanksgiving dinner a little bit easier and some of the prep work that I do before Thanksgiving Day. So I hope that you guys will enjoy this video and find it to be helpful and if you do I hope that you will give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more homemaking and motherhood content. I'm gonna just talk you guys through it while I get everything done. So today is two days before the day that I'm preparing my actual Thanksgiving dinner. Normally that would be Thanksgiving Day but because we are going to my mother-in-law's house on Thanksgiving Day I'm actually gonna be preparing Thanksgiving dinner a day before Thanksgiving. That way, if anyone wants to come to our home and spend the day with us, then they can the day before Thanksgiving and have a little bit to eat as well. Of course, I'm looking a little bit crazy today. That's pretty normal for me um, this time of the year. We just got back from Tennessee yesterday. We had to drive eight hours to Tennessee so that we can attend a wedding, and we literally just got back last night. So, I would have done like a grocery haul for you guys, everything that I got for Thanksgiving, but because I had to have groceries delivered while we were away and have my mother come and like put the groceries away, I couldn't actually do the grocery haul. I just needed my groceries to be here once we got home. So today, um, the next day, I am trying to not only unpack and catch up from Tennessee, but also begin prepping for Thanksgiving. I, I know! And there is a Noah. This is my mom. Hello! So all of the things today, this is going to be a mom live Thanksgiving dinner prep with me. And you guys, I am exhausted today and I haven't even got to start it. So anywho, <laughs> we're going to do this and it's going to be a great Thanksgiving prep, no doubt about it. For most people, Thanksgiving is a little bit of a stressful time, but I'm telling you guys, once you start learning how to prep things earlier and find like a system that works for you, you learn to actually enjoy Thanksgiving and breaking bread around the table with family. So enough of the talking, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it. Today, I'm going to be preparing our desserts. So today is going to be sweet potato pie and pound cake day. Tomorrow is going to be making sure that I prepare all of the meats that have to go inside of the dishes. I'm going to prep the pasta ahead of time. Tomorrow I'm going to clean the greens. I'm going to chop up all the vegetables, but it's all going to be in the same one video. So you guys are going to see. Let's just dive in. All right, you guys. So first I decided to go ahead and prep my sweet potato pie. So here I have two pounds of sweet potato or it's gonna equal to two cups of sweet potato puree. So here I'm just pureeing the sweet potatoes and I'm adding a little bit of water because that just helps to soften it up and give it a nice moist texture and get rid of those strings that nobody wants in their sweet potato pie. So then I'm just adding some butter. I like to use unsalted butter or the sweet cream unsalted butter both of them taste really good it doesn't really matter but i think that the sweet cream just gives it a nice little touch so i'm just adding my butter and it's already softened so i didn't take the time to melt it down because once i mix it in it's just going to mix in just fine so now i'm adding my sugar i'm using both white sugar as well as brown sugar and so i have about a half a cup of both to equal out to one cup of sugar total so i'm just pressing it down to make sure that it's actually going to be a half a cup and if you look into the reflection of the bowl you see that Noah is definitely <laughs> cooking with me so that's nothing new he's usually somewhere around so just mixing in all of that sugar and then once the sugar was mixed in I went ahead and added my eggs and I like to mix my eggs in a separate cup or bowl first and then I add that into the mixture as well and then put it right back onto the mixer and let that mix and while it's mixing I I add in some evaporated milk. You guys, making sweet potato pie is so easy. It's literally just a few simple ingredients that you mix together in pretty much any order if you want. 
I add some vanilla extract and then I also add some nutmeg, some cinnamon, and some roasted cinnamon. I also decided to go back and add a little bit of butter extract as well, but first a little bit of flour to just thicken it up a little bit in here as well. I'm adding that butter extract with no <laughs> measurements whatsoever. So while that's mixing up, I'm just putting some things away and cleaning up a little bit. The key to having an efficient Thanksgiving prep is making sure that you kind of just keep your workspace clean and you clean dishes as you go so that you don't have a huge mess to deal with once you're done. So if you clean as you go, that just already simplifies a lot for you. So, so here I'm just using like a regular pie crust that I got from the store. This is Mary Calendar. I like this one. It's the deep dish one. And then I also like to use the graham cracker crust for um, the sweet potato pie. So I'm doing one of each. I don't know why I always make two sweet potato pies. We do not eat two of them. One always goes to waste. So maybe next time I will cut my ingredients in half. So one crazy little hack that I like to do for the graham cracker crust is put a little foil around it so that it doesn't burn the edges. So wasting no time moving right along to my pound cake. I am just adding three sticks of butter unsalted of course. I used one sweet cream and then two regular unsalted butter and then I'm also adding in three cups of sugar just regular granulated sugar right into the mixture while it's all mixing up and I'm gonna get that butter and sugar mixed in really well before I begin adding my eggs. I'm adding five eggs and I'm just going to crack them in a separate bowl just in case I get some eggshells in there because getting eggshell inside of your cake mix is not going to be fun or even easy to get out and I can be a little clumsy sometimes. This time I didn't have to worry about that but you guys I'm pretty clumsy. That is really nothing new around here so always be on the more safe and cautious side around here just you know to be safe. We don't want any eggshells or any mistakes inside of Thanksgiving dessert. So here I'm just adding those in one at a time, letting those mix in there. Here I accidentally added like two in there. That's me being clumsy, but that's okay. It makes sense just fine. And then I went ahead and added in that last egg, you guys. And pound cake is super easy as well. You just add some sugar, some butter, some egg, and then you add your milk and your flour as well as all of your extracts. So for me, I like to add some vanilla, some lemon, and some butter extract. You can add some rum extract. You can add some almond extract, whatever you like, or just one flavor. Once all of that is mixed in, I just go ahead and add in my flour and I'm using a flour sifter and alternating that with my milk. This is half, half and half and then half whole milk. You can also use heavy whipping cream, whatever you like to do, depending on the consistency you're going for it with your cake. Heavy whipping cream and half and half makes it a little more like dense. And then if you use something more thin, like a whole milk, it gives it a little more fluffiness. So I like mine's like a little dense, a little fluffy. So I'm doing half and half and um, whole milk so that it's not too, too heavy, which I would get from the heavy whipping cream. So just alternating between the three cups of flour, sifting that into there and adding in the milk as well. And then I'm just gonna fold that into the batter with my spatula and then mix that. And then of course, while it's mixing, take a little cleaning break and clean up as much as I can. Once that's done, I went ahead and poured the batter into my pre oil pan. Now you guys, I didn't have any liners for this pan and I am so terrible with the oil and um, flour thingy to make the cake not stick to the pan. So to make my life easier, I oil my pan and then I stick some like wax paper, like parchment paper all around the sides of the pan and cut a little circle and put that in the bottom of the pan and make sure I oil the middle spouts really good. And my cake never sticks going that route. So here, my sweet potato pies are out of the oven and now that they are, I could put my cake in and once that was done, you guys, this is what it looked like the next morning with some icing, which is just powdered sugar, heavy whipping cream, and lemon extract and then a little bit of lemon zest as well. So that's how that came out. So now that it is the next day, just giving you guys a realistic glimpse of what my Thanksgiving prep day looks like. In the morning, of course, I had to prepare some breakfast for Noah, my husband, and myself. So to make things really easy, I am cracking these eggs right into the pan. Normally, I'll scramble them in the bowl, 
But don't worry, you guys. I was being safe this time. I didn't get any shells in there. I was very careful and very confident this time. So just making six eggs, two for each of us. And then I'm also going to add some toast on the side of this so that we can have a really quick, really simple breakfast so that I can get right back to prepping for Thanksgiving. So day one was just prepping my dessert. And now day two after we finished breakfast and had a little bit of coffee i have three pots on the stove ready for me to make my meat for both my dressing and greens my pasta for my mac and cheese and some eggs for my dressing not everybody likes eggs inside of their dressing but i do and my husband he barely does so i keep them really small diced and to a minimal but here i'm adding some smoked pork neck bone into a pot with some smoke pork ham hock and i know this is so so bad you can just do like smoked turkey instead of the pork and i know that i should have but you know it's just for flavor and you just like don't really eat that if you don't want to just leave it in the pot for the flavor but i'm gonna probably eat some of the neck bones probably not the ham hock but definitely the neck bones it's very salty so if you're using this in your greens then you just know to go easy on the sauce so I'm also going to, so now I'm just adding in my pasta so that that can start to boil as well. And I'm just going to boil that until I didn't say about seven or eight minutes. I'm adding a little bit of oil so that it doesn't stick since I'm probably going to have this on low and I am not going to be stirring it because I'm going to be doing something else. So adding a little oil just to make sure it doesn't stick while you're not like occasionally stirring it until it is done. And then I am putting in about four four eggs for the dressing and these are just going to be hard boiled eggs that I am going to dice up later. So now everything is on the stove and it's cooking and I'm going to set about a 15 minute timer so that I will be notified once the eggs are done and then I am going to get started with my yam. So you guys this here, this is bad. This was such a struggle. I put on my little potato pillar from last year. You guys, I really had to laugh at myself because it was so bad. Like, just look at this. I have no idea how I managed to do this last year. If you saw last year's Thanksgiving prep video, you saw the struggle. But this year, I was not having it. I threw that thing down and went to the store <laughs> and, and got me a better slicer. So once I got back, I went ahead and turned on a movie. I turned on Home Alone 2, had a little bit of coffee in here my pasta was done because I went ahead and let my husband keep an eye on that while I went to the store so here you guys are just seeing how much faster this potato pillar I got a three-piece set that comes with different type of blades from Walmart for like seven dollars and oh my goodness it was such a life saver just made things go so much faster I cannot believe I sat there with that other pillar like that little cheap one or two dollar pillar last year I don't know how I did it but I'm glad that I told myself no not today on this Thanksgiving year so just working my way through all of those yams peeling them and oh my god I really couldn't believe how quick this went I was done in like 10 minutes you guys last time I probably was sitting here for like a good hour just peeling and cutting and slicing potatoes it was torture so another thing that I picked up while I was there was a vegetable chopper but it didn't go so well for the yams like I thought that the slices could be like adjusted to be a little bit taller but no it gave you some really thin slices for if you were slicing like I don't know tomatoes cucumbers maybe so I'm just showing you guys what I mean. So you would just slide it across the slicer just like this. And this was like a $12 slicer. And it's really pretty good besides the fact that I can't like slice my yams with it. Because this is how thin they came out. And if that's, you know, your style, your taste, then hey, go for it. Make your life easier. But my husband would be like, what in the world is this? So... I just went ahead and sliced them up. That still didn't take me too long. I don't mind the slicing. It's really just the peeling for me that really just drives me absolutely insane if I don't have a nice blade. So this one worked out pretty well for me. I had no complaints and it was smooth selling from here. So just working my way through that and chopping them up real good. Now, I know that this would be a lot easier if you would just boil your potatoes before you peel them and slice them. If you boil them first, then the peeling would kind of just like peel right off or slide right off. And then you can also slice it easier because it will be soft 
But I feel like when you boil your sweet potatoes, you also boil out some of that flavor. So when I'm doing like sweet potato pie, I don't boil it. I will roast my potatoes before I puree it and mix it into the pie. And then when I am doing my yams, I just go ahead and peel them and cut them raw and just take a little bit of TLC, extra love and care. And they just come out a lot better. They do take longer to bake overall, but because it takes longer, that just allows a lot more time for all of your flavors and your seasonings your vanilla and your butter and your sugar and all of that good stuff to soak right into those potatoes a little bit longer and they just they just taste a lot better so yeah it's harder but to me it's a thousand percent worth it it's like the difference between slow cooking something and boiling something on high heat so just go ahead and try it you guys if you're used to boiling your sweet potatoes beforehand as opposed to like chopping them and slicing them raw and then putting them in the oven, you know, just like that. Go ahead and, you know, try it. Let me know what you guys think. And then obviously we can agree to disagree here. <laughs> so if you like it the other way, then that is fine too. I used to like it that way too, you know, both of them taste good. So just comment and let me know what is your preferred way to prepare your yams or your sweet potatoes. I would absolutely love to know how do you make it easier and how do you make it taste you know the best go ahead and share your thanksgiving prep tips and tricks with me down below in the comments we can share a little bit of our favorites together i would absolutely love that so here i am on my very last yam and thank the good lord i am done with those yams you guys i made sure that i started with that one as far as shopping goes so that I just got it out the way since I knew it was probably my least favorite thing to do. So got that out the way and here is what they all look like. Nice and sliced. I even mixed in those really thin ones because why not? They all taste just fine. I just had to make sure that I chopped the other ones like not too, too big so that the thinner ones don't cook faster than the thicker ones. But there's all my yams and I'm going to store this inside of some storage bags with a little bit of cool water so that tomorrow all I have to do is clean them rinse them really good and then put them in a pan and then add like my cinnamon my sugar my butter my vanilla and you know all of that good stuff but because all the chopping is done it'll go by so much faster tomorrow i'll have some fresh yams but the time is cut in half so here i'm using some rose dinner rose this is where you can just buy frozen dough it tastes better than like the pre-made rose that you just buy from the bakery section because you just buy like the dough raw but it's less time than like preparing the dough on your own last year i made my own dough so if you're interested in seeing that definitely go ahead and check out last year's thanksgiving prep video but this one, I wanted to just give you guys like a different idea, another way of how you can make prep a little bit easier by just going that route. So just went ahead and set that on the pan so that they can um, rise. It takes about three to five minutes. In the meantime, I am moving on to chopping the rest of my vegetables. So here I'm chopping everything that's going to go inside of my dressing, starting with some green peppers. And you guys, look how fast this is going. I mean, oh my goodness, I really can't believe I have never had one of these before. I just went the old fashioned way because you know, you do what you got to do. You use what you got, but oh my goodness, this went by so much faster. And I think, I think I'm in love with it. I'm never going to go back to the old fashioned way of chopping vegetables ever, ever again. So I'm just going to store every everything inside of the same bag that's going inside of one dish so here this bag is going to be everything that's going to be going inside of my dressing so that tomorrow all i gotta do is mix up my vegetables with the cornbread some chicken stock some egg some sage some onion powder garlic powder salt pepper whatever you like to put in your dressing but because everything is already chopped up and ready to be mixed in it's gonna go a lot easier so here i am slicing and dicing my celery so that it's also pretty small and i'm just sliding it across the slicer and again it's gonna do both slice it and dice it but i should have left them longer i have no idea why i cut these so small i had to stop at some point of course so that i didn't chop my finger up so i got them down as as low as I could get them and then I went ahead and then you know chopped the rest of them up the old-fashioned way with my good old chopping knife 
but I still saved a lot of time by, you know, dicing it down with the chopper beforehand. So just chopping up the last little bits of that, which took about a minute or so. And then I'm just going to go ahead and throw that inside of the same bag as the green pepper because all of this stuff is going inside of the same dish. So it's really no need to put them inside of separate, you know, bags. It just makes it a lot easier because I'll just take it out the fridge and just dump it inside of the pan. Same thing for my onions. I'm just dicing those up. I like to put onion and green pepper, celery, and like I mentioned earlier, some eggs inside of my dressing. Everybody doesn't like the eggs, but I absolutely love it. It's like one of those things that I probably need. So adding in the onion and then I am going to move right along to doing the exact same thing for my greens. Inside of my greens, I keep it pretty simple as far as vegetables goes. Only thing I add in there is some onion and some garlic. If you prefer like the minced, like pre-minced, you can go that route as well. But, you know, you just add a little more flavor when you add like the fresh vegetables, of course. So here are those eggs that I mentioned earlier that I am dicing up as well. These are soft, so I had to be a little more gentle not to, like, squish them. <laughs> but I definitely threw them in the dicer and added those to the same bag as everything else that is going inside of the dressing. So if you really want to make Thanksgiving prep a lot easier for yourself, um, prep early, dice everything, cut everything. But if you purchase this here little slicer or dicer, anyone that you want, mine's came from Walmart by Main States. It was only $12, but that alone is already going to cut down a lot of your time. Here I am now starting on my vegetables for my greens, which again, is just going to be some onions and some garlic. This time I did not make them small. You guys, I just said, let's just see what this thing can take. And I put them in there as big as I can and threw all of that garlic on there at once and it chopped it I did have to push a few times for the garlic but nevertheless it was still pretty you know simple and easy and this is dishwasher safe so once I was done I went ahead and took a break through all of that stuff in the dishwasher cleaned up a little bit and moved right along to my collard greens so this is just for myself my husband and my son so I don't have too many of them I'm just breaking them up into like small pieces pulling them off of the leaves and putting them into a bowl taking them off the stem and then I'm going to clean them with some vinegar some cool water and if you have like some non-toxic dish soap like plant derived dish soap you can also add like a teeny drop of that you know obviously you know how to clean your greens this is in no way shape or form a tutorial this is pretty much just a Thanksgiving prep with me so we can spend a little bit of time together for the holiday season and share some of you know our kitchen secrets with one another so I just peel my eyes right off the stem I break it up and then clean it with a vinegar a water and a little bit of plant derived dish soap not too much to bubble it all up just a teeny teeny bit and scrub it with both my hands and then swish it around like I'm hand washing some clothes and that normally does the trick once that's done I give them a good rinse down and then I clean them again rinse them again and then afterwards I store them in to like a container with some cool water so that it's kind of still like soaking and cleaning even after the fact like overnight but this way in the morning all I have to do is toss them into a stock pot with the already chopped vegetables and some chicken stock as well as the meat that is on the stove boiling. Here is what those greens look like inside of the bowl ready to be stored in the fridge with some cool water. And here is what the meat looks like. Once that's done, I'll let it cool down, break it up, and put it in the fridge. But I also decided to go ahead and do my turkey wings as well, which is going to go into my dressing. So all of that, and as you guys can see, at this point, like, I'm almost done. So here I'm just making some cornbread for my dressing to go along with the turkey wings and all the chopped vegetables. And then I'm going to pop that in the oven on, like, 350 for about... 15 16 minutes I think I actually ended up doing 20 minutes because it wasn't getting pretty dark like I like it for that old-fashioned dressing but I didn't want to like burn it so here is pretty much what it looked like when I took it out of the oven not too dark not too light kind of like 
half and half, but it, it'll be just fine. So here you guys can see that that movie I turned on earlier, Home Alone 2, is still playing. So that just shows that that took me no time at all. All right, you guys, that sums up today's Thanksgiving dinner prep. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and find it to be helpful. And if you did, I hope that you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more motherhood and homemaking content. That's going to be all for today's video. I hope that you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving and a happy holiday season. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye.